Okay, everybody, today we are going to do a project about ancient Egypt. We were just learning about Egypt before we left um, for spring break, and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and do a project about that since we've already studied some about Egypt. So if you look at the slideshow on Google Classroom, you're going to see the map and flag that we already did at school. And um, then there's a slide that talks about some of the places that Egypt is mentioned in the Bible. We would have talked about this more in class as well, and some of these stories would be familiar to you. So some of these stories are, for example, when Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery, and something so sad got turned to something amazing because Joseph eventually rose up to serve right under the Pharaoh, and that helped the Israelites be able to survive the famine. Then we have a story following that in Exodus where Moses has to go um, and tell the Pharaoh to let God's people, the Israelites, go because he isn't treating them right anymore. And um, it talks about in the Bible how so many, so much time had passed that the Pharaoh didn't even remember Joseph. And so he was mistreating all the Israelites and they were slaves. And so God called Moses to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And so those are some of the stories in the Old Testament that take place in Genesis and Exodus. In the New Testament, we learn that Jesus and his family had to spend some time in Egypt as well. They had to take um, flight and escape to Egypt for a while. King Herod was looking for Jesus and his family, and the wise men warned them that they needed to escape um, so that they weren't harmed. And so Jesus even spent some time in Egypt. So why is it important to learn about ancient Egypt and the Bible? Well, if we learn about some of the things about ancient Egypt, it helps us to understand the stories in the Bible more. And one of the things in ancient Egypt is how important the pharaohs were to the ancient Egyptians. They actually treated the pharaoh almost like a god. And so they didn't really understand that there's a one true god. And so when Moses came to tell Pharaoh that God said to let his people go, he didn't really want to listen because he didn't believe in God. Um, so that's what some of the reasons why I think learning about ancient Egypt is so important. So today we're actually going to make an ancient Egyptian death mask. And when the Pharaohs were buried in their tombs, they would be buried with these death masks on. So I think they're just kind of really cool. And I hope you enjoy creating yours. I'm going to show you how to make a Pharaoh's death mask. Um, but I did put a picture in the PowerPoint of Queen Cleopatra. If you want to do a female instead of a male pharaoh, you can do that. And you can base her off of Queen Cleopatra. Um, but the how-to directions are going to be for a pharaoh death mask, okay? So um, I hope you guys enjoy your project. And I want you to know that I still miss you so much. All right, guys. Today we're going to start drawing our death masks. Our death masks are inspired from ancient Egypt. And the death mask is something that pharaohs would be buried in, um, in their tombs. So the example that I'm doing is going to be a pharaoh. If you'd rather um, be inspired by a female Egyptian, there's an example on the PowerPoint that I'm going to walk through um, the death mask inspired by King Tut. Okay. So what you want to do, no matter what, is to start with the shape of the face. So I have the sides of his, the head right now. And then I can come down to form a chin shape. Okay. Once I have that, then I'm going to draw where the headdress starts on the forehead right here. Once I have that, I'm going to do a rainbow shape on top of it. So just a curved line. Okay. And so this curved line is going to be the top of the death mask. So make sure you get that just right. I've begun my death mask. I have the shape of my face here and my curved line like a rainbow. Now I'm going to continue drawing the death mask. So I'm going to add lines right here. Okay, to separate the top and the sides. Then I'm going to continue, move this so you can see, I'm going to continue the shape here of the death mask. It's going to come in a little bit, like in the picture on Google Classroom, and then curve down. 
you guys can see that. It's going to curve and curve. So you can see I'm drawing nice and big to fill my space here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and show where this ends. So I'm going to have straight lines that come down here. And this is the whole shape of the headdress. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding some details to the face. So I'm going to start by drawing lines like this to help me mark everything where it's going to go. Okay, so these lines are showing me where everything's going to go. My nose is going to go right here. Okay, and my eyes are going to go right here. And you might notice that makeup on the Egyptians that makes the eyes look really long on the ends. Make sure your eyes are the same size. You can draw a line above them and make sure that they're the same height. Okay, then I can draw circles in the middle for the iris of the eye. That's that colorful part of the eye. Add the pupil, that's the dark part of the eye. Remember when we drew our lions last week, they had a reflection. We can add that as well. I can add some eyebrows, which are like fat curved lines above the eyes. Okay, so I have my eyes and my eyebrows and my nose. So next is my mouth. My mouth have a top lip and a bottom lip. Now I can add ears, and my ears go from my eyes to my nose. Once I have my ears, I can start adding some details to my headdress. So I'm going to add these lines. In the King Tut example, they have a um, gold and blue pattern. Okay, so there's my pattern on the top. You'll see these lines are kind of um, vertical and diagonal. The lines on the sides are going to go horizontal. And so this is where you might want to get a ruler. So when you get to doing the sides, you can get a ruler to make sure that your lines are straight across and even on each side of the head. Okay, so I've got my headdress done. Now I'm going to add the detail here. I'm going to now do the chin part here. You'll notice on the example it kind of looked like he had hair braided coming from his chin. And to make the braided look, we can just do X's. like so. And then the last thing is to create the neck and shoulders um, with the necklace looking lines. So I started here to mark uh, the end of the neck and then about that same height is where my shoulders are going to be sitting on top there. Um, then I can create lines like so across here. I like to think of them kind of like shoulder pads. And then we're just going to do curved lines leading around. And these kind of look like necklace pieces. Once I have my 
necklace lines here. I can decide if I want to be done or I want to add more details. Um, so some examples of some details can be seen both in the King Tut mask and in the drawings that are done as examples. So some of those examples might be the snake that um, is at the top of the headdress right here. Um, you could put patterns right here. I'm just going to do simple circles for a little extra detail. If you wanted to, you could add lines in the necklace. Just like that, you could add some lines to break it up, make it look kind of like stone pieces. Um, so that's really up to you how much more detail you want to add here. If you want to see what it's like to add a little detail here of the snake, I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to bring this down a little bit and then bring it up and out at the top for the head. So you can see how I added that detail there. That's optional. And you can decide if there's any other details that you want to add to yours. Um, and then you're ready for the next step. Once you have your drawing done, we're going to start um, doing color. So you can um, trace the Sharpie or markers if you have them um, before you color, if you want to keep your lines nice and crisp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my picture with some different skinny markers in the color that I plan to use for each part of my design. I'm just going to keep tracing and coloring until um, I'm done with markers and then I can switch to another supply if I have it available. Um, in my case, I'm going to use colored pencils. Remember, since we're working from home, you guys can use whatever materials you have at home, so don't feel like you have to use the same thing as I am. If you don't have at home what I have, if you do, then I would definitely go ahead and give it a shot. Um, but you guys can decide based on what you have available at home. So right now we're just tracing the picture, and then we're going to color it. I'm using colors that I see in the example on the PowerPoint of King Tut's mask. Um, so that's what I would suggest. Uh, if you want to get a little more creative and change and do different colors, you can. Um, if you have any kind of metallic colors like gold available, those would be good for copying the colors that you see in the examples because they use a lot of gold and a lot of blue. You'll also see some red in the example, so if you want to add red to your colors that you're using. But mostly, you'll probably want to use gold and blue. I'm going to be adding in a little bit of red because I see those colors in some of the neck area on my example of King Tut. All right, I have finished tracing my picture with the colors that I'm going to use. So the next thing to do is to erase my pencil marks and then I can start coloring. I'm going to be using colored pencils, but remember if you don't have those at home, you can use other materials. You're just going to use whatever you have available to make your artwork, okay? Once you're done erasing all your pencil marks, you can start coloring. And, you know, depending on what you have at home, I'm going to use colored pencils. But markers, crayons, pastels, um, colored pencils like I am doing, whatever you have and you think would look nice. Also, remember, if you want it to look really Egyptian, you're going to stick to a lot of blue and gold, maybe a little red and turquoise. Um, but if you want to just be creative and have fun with the colors that you like, you can do that too. So you can decide if you want to stick to Egyptian colors or if you want to make up the colors yourself. And then it's time to color. Remember when you're coloring, if you use oval type motions, um, you'll have your color filled in better and you won't have so many um, 
empty spaces that look kind of scritchy scratch you'll have smooth coloring and you can make your color darker or lighter by how hard you press I see in this spot I pressed really hard and so it's kind of nice and dark but in this one if I color lightly and softly it doesn't look as dark and so that kind of gives me two different colors from the same color and you can do that with crayons or colored pencils by pressing hard or soft you'll get a darker or a lighter color okay so I hope you guys have fun coloring I'm gonna color my picture all right guys you're gonna keep coloring on your project and you'll notice that um, I've just got a little bit more done now I'm going to spend um, two weeks on this project so you guys are gonna have two weeks working on this so don't feel like you have to have it all done all at once you might draw it and then leave it alone and come back and then trace it and then come back and then start coloring and then come back and keep coloring it might take you a few um, different times of working on this just like in art class we don't finish things in one art class a lot of times it takes us three or four art classes to finish so um, just keep working on this a little bit at a time over the next two weeks and um, I'm going to keep working on mine All right, as you can see, I'm finished coloring my Egyptian pharaoh mask. So all I have to do now is the background. So just choose something simple, um, like marker or crayon or colored pencil, probably just one color. Um, you could even leave it white or cut it out and glue it on a construction paper. Um, but you just want to leave the background really simple so it doesn't distract from your really cool pharaoh death mask that you've made. All right, I finished coloring in the background on my Feral Death Mask. I just used a nice dark marker so that I could have it contrast really nicely and make my death mask noticeable. You guys can do um, whatever you have at home that you think will look cool. I can't wait to see what your different ideas look like. Um, so just to review, you're going to start by drawing with pencil. There's an example on the PowerPoint of step-by-step -step how to draw it. Um, there's also an example of a queen like Queen Cleopatra in case you want to do a girl. If you want it to look like it's ancient Egyptian, you're going to want to use a lot of blue and gold, maybe a little bit of reds and turquoise. But if you want to do some other colors, that's okay. Um, you want to do a nice job coloring. You can trace first if you want to. Do a solid color in the background so that your mask pops off your page and, um, have fun with it. This should take you uh, two weeks to do, so don't think you have to get it all done this week.